it's amazing to me to look back 50 years and think that it's been 50 years. It was a flight that launched John Glenn as a national hero and put America on even footing with the Soviet Union. It seems, still seems so vivid to me. On February 20th, 1962, Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth aboard Friendship 7. And I trained very hard for that first orbital flight. And uh, we had tried to foresee all the things that could happen, but we couldn't, we didn't oversee, we didn't see all of them. Fifty years ago this President's Day, Glenn circled the Earth three times in five hours. I'm proud of what we all did, all seven of us did back in those days on those flights. We, we, uh, we worked very closely together. With so many blessings and accomplishments, Glenn admits there's still one brass ring he wishes he snagged, being the first man to walk on the moon. I tell Neil that I'm not, I'm, I, I've told Neil this a number of times, that I'm not given to being jealous. I've been very fortunate to have a lot of great experiences in my life and I'm thankful for them. But, uh, and so I don't see myself as being envious. But in his case, I'll make an exception. <laughs> Glenn was also the oldest person to fly in space. At age 77, he was aboard Shuttle Discovery in 1998. Glenn kept mementos from his flights, including the hand controller he used to fly Friendship 7. The items are now on display at Ohio State. He hopes the items will drum up interest among schoolchildren in space, science, and technology. But he also expressed concern about the future of NASA's space program. Lift off! 50 years after his first space flight, America no longer has its own means of getting astronauts to orbit. Atlantis blasted off on the final space shuttle flight last summer. But I would have been much happier had we said we'll do away with the shuttle once we have developed the replacement for it. It cut out our only means of getting to the space station to realize the potential of the station to do basic research. Now 90, Glenn lives in Columbus, Ohio with his wife Annie. The couple has been married for 68 years. Glenn and Scott Carpenter are the last surviving Mercury astronauts. Both are expected to attend events to mark the 50th anniversary of Glenn securing his place in history. Matt Friedman, Associated Press.